Hey guys, it's me Zahara. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be the worst books that I read in 2022. These are seven books that I just really did not enjoy, whether I didn't like the characters, the plot, I just had really high expectations and they let me down. But for whatever reason, they were really, really disappointing and unfortunately they have made it into my top seven worst books of the year. Now I don't think I own any of these books because I unhauled them because I didn't like them except I think maybe one because it's part of a series but we'll get to that but before we get into this video make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on bookish content from me. I also have an Instagram and a Goodreads that will both be linked down below if you would like to follow me elsewhere. Now without further ado let's talk about the seven worst books that I read in 2022. These are in no particular order but the first book is The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. I think I vlogged when I was reading this and I'm sure this comes as no surprise but I really really did not enjoy this book and I typically really like Riley Sager in his books. He's a thriller author which isn't a genre that I read too much from but for some reason his books grip me and fascinate me and their synopsis are always so intriguing that I'm excited to pick them up. This one follows a dual timeline. We are following our main character who went to this summer camp when she was younger and something really bad happened at this summer camp that we don't really know until obviously the end of the story and then we're also following her present day and she has been invited back to this camp to be a camp counselor and she is very hesitant but she goes and then weird things start happening yet again. So the synopsis with the dual timelines, this kind of underlying mystery of ooh, what happened then, what's happening now really gripped me. I was so so excited to read this book but it just did not deliver. I really, really did not like our main character. I think the decisions that she made and just being inside her head really irritated me because I just felt like she was so immature during the entire book. And that was acceptable when we were in her like younger self POV. But when we are learning about her, I think she's like 30 in the present timeline. She is still so immature and makes really dumb decisions and her interactions with this kind of love interest that was thrown in this book for really no reason was really cringy. I did not like the dialogue between them. I just I really despise our main character and I also think that the reveal was not as exciting as I was anticipating. I thought this book was going to leave me just shocked to my core and this whole buildup was what happened that summer that she was there when she was younger and it just, it, it wasn't what I thought it was gonna be. It was still interesting but it just, the, the delivery was not as well executed as I had hoped and what had actually occurred was not worth the whole buildup for like 300 pages. So Overall, I just really did enjoy this book and unfortunately it was one of the worst ones that I read last year. Next we have A Dark and Hollow Star. I have no idea who the author is but I'll put it up on the screen. This is a YA urban fantasy that I was really really excited to read because it's set in Toronto and as someone who grew up in Toronto I was very excited to see my city represented and just see us kind of explore this really really unique setting. But there was nothing in this story to do with Toronto. There were random just name drops like, oh, the CN Tower is right there. And that was it. There was nothing else to do with Toronto, which I'm not going into the story wanting a research presentation about Toronto, but I would have liked some elements of it, especially because it is an urban fantasy setting and I like to learn about the place that the book is being set in if it is in real life, just to see kind of the connections that they make and kind of real world experiences. I also just think that this book read way, way, way too young for me. And yes, it's YA, but it very much felt like the complete younger side of YA. So I just, I didn't like how this book was delivered and I really didn't enjoy our main character. I think the plot had so many holes. There was there were so many plot conveniences. Things just did not make sense. They did not connect. And ultimately, this book was just not what I was expecting, not what I'd hoped for. And it just all around disappointed me. 
The next book is The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. This is an enemies to lovers fantasy romance that I was so, so excited to get to. I was so excited for this. It sounded so good. We have our main character who decides that she is going to woo the Shadow King and then kill him to take his throne. So she's trying to marry him and then also realizes that there are other people who are out to get the Shadow King. And so now she's finding herself protecting him. And I just thought that this was going to be such a gripping story. Enemies to Lovers is one of my favorite fantasy romance tropes, but the plot holes and plot conveniences yet again failed me. They were throughout the entire book, and the big reveal was very predictable. Kind of knew it from the moment that this character was introduced to the story where the story was going to end, and so it didn't feel like it was very well crafted. I also feel like I didn't really learn anything about the king's shadow magic. He has this really, really cool ability to control and manipulate shadows, and I feel like we didn't explore that at all. So this entire magic system in this world was completely just a mystery to me, and I wish we had spent more time with that. This book was also very, very short, so I feel like we didn't get that character development. We didn't get that world building that I had hoped from a fantasy story, so there was it was just very underdeveloped, not very well crafted, and just overall left me wanting a lot more from the story than what I actually received. Next is the one book that I actually own, but I'm too lazy to go grab, so editing me is going to have to put up a picture, but that's A Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab. This is the second book in the Shades of Magic series, and unfortunately, it was very underwhelming. This has middle book syndrome vibes and just left me so frustrated at the series because I loved the first one, A Darker Shade of Magic, and I was so excited to get a continuation and just get to explore more of this parallel London world and see more of Lila Bard. I love that character, and this book, for the first 50%, absolutely nothing happened. Like literally nothing happened in the first half of this book and we were just following our characters doing these random things that didn't really have anything to do with the plot and then we finally got to the really exciting part of this story which follows kind of a trial and I think it was maybe 50 pages so it just there, there was a lot of pacing issues, a lot of things that just didn't need to be in the book, and I wish we had spent so much more time on these trials because they were so, so interesting, and all of the action scenes, all of the fighting that happened within them just happened way too quickly. I feel like I blinked and the person won, and I didn't know what happened, and I wish we had had that be majority of the story and just cut the rest of it out because it really was unnecessary, so... This book I'm hoping is just middle book syndrome and the third one will surprise me and be a really great conclusion, but my expectations are kind of low. I'm nervous and we'll just, we'll see what happens. The next book is Dragon's Bride by Katie Robert. You guys know I made a whole video reading this book and while I had a phenomenal time reading it because it was hilarious to me, how much I did not like this book. It still was probably the worst book that I read in 2022 and I gave it one star because I hated this book so, so much. It's a woman and a dragon's forced marriage type of relationship and it was just so out of my comfort zone. I just there's, it's not even that I can pinpoint something bad about this book. It just was not a book for me, which I recognize is kind of unfair to the book and the author, but I really liked Katie Roberts' writing style. I thought this book was really, really quick and fast and easy to get through, and I really liked her character descriptions and her kind of world building we are following. Honestly, can't even remember that much, but we have a woman who gets auctioned off to this dragon to become his bride, I think. I don't really remember, but it just, it was a lot. The smut was very strange to read between a human being and a dragon. And I don't really know what else to say about this book. I just did not like it. I am so sorry. It's just, 
it's not for me. Next is a book where I, again, don't know the author, but it's called A Court of Dragons. This is a KU fantasy romance that I was actually really excited to read. I thought it was going to be really cool. Quite frankly, I cannot tell you what it's about because I think I skimmed this book, which was not very difficult to do considering it was, I think, like 200 pages. And that obviously meant it was very, very underdeveloped. I feel like we were just jumping from one place to another. Nothing was well fleshed out. I didn't really get a good sense of the world, of the characters. There was absolutely zero character development. And the ending was underwhelming to say the least. This book has a beautiful cover. When I read the synopsis, I was intrigued, though I cannot recall it at this moment. And I was really, really excited. I thought it was going to be a really good fantasy romance, but everything was just underdeveloped. There was just not enough for it to grip me, for me to be invested, and I just wish we had added, honestly, a good 150 more pages at least to really build the world, really set up the characters. I still don't have an understanding of their personalities. I did like the relationship, but that was kind of it. And that wasn't even enough to really get me invested. I was just like, okay, they're cute. That's it. That's all I got. So not, not the best fantasy romance I've read and definitely will not be continuing on with the series. And then the last book on this list, I saved for the end because one of my best friends, Rachel, this is like one of her favorite romance books of all time. And I know a lot of other people feel the same, but unfortunately this book was just not for me. And that is People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I was very, very excited to read this book because I loved Beach Read by Emily Henry. It is one of my favorite romance books of all time. I really, really enjoyed it. And so I was really excited to get through more of Emily Henry's works. I think I'll still give book lovers a try, but People We Made on Vacation was just not the romance for me. We are following the story of these two characters who used to be best friends and they went on vacations together and that was kind of their thing. That was what bonded them. However, they had some sort of falling out and we're following these this dual timeline where in the present they haven't talked in like years and in order to kind of rekindle their friendship the female main character decides that she's going to reach out and see if he wants to go on one last vacation together and then we kind of see this reveal of what happened between them see their romance develop so it's a friends to not enemies but not friends anymore to lovers romance and I haven't I don't think I've ever really read a friends to lovers romance but I think I actually do enjoy the trope I just think it's really hard to get it right and I don't think that this one did it I think for me friends to lovers I really like when there is just no feelings whatsoever it's very platonic and then we see this kind of relationship foster from it but for this one I feel like that just wasn't the case. I think there were always lingering feelings and I just don't really like that. And the conflict that made them drift apart was the stupidest thing ever and I just hated it so much. When that reveal came, I honestly just wanted to DNF this book because I was just thinking like seriously, that is what this this whole book was created on. And it just, it, it really, really irritated me and I just wish they just never had the conflict. I wish we just got a really fun friend silver story and them traveling the world and I wish that was that was the story. I wish that was what people we meet on vacation was. Also, this book has nothing to do with the people they meet on vacation. Where are the people? Where's the adventure? I don't know. But that's besides the point, but yeah. So there you have it. Those are the worst books that I read in 2022. Let me know what your worst books of the year were down below. I would love to know. But with that, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you aren't already. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.